This episode of Inside the Game is brought to you by MSI Gaming. The game just got real. Head to our website at insidethegame.ca, where there you can hit up on the MSI link to get all your PC gaming needs. Now, let's get on with the show. What's up everybody? Welcome to Inside the Game, your one-stop shop for everything cool in video games. You want to be a part of the show? Then head to InsideTheGame.ca where there you can submit your clip and end off our show. Now Nate and I check out Ori and the Will of the Wisp this week, Scott and Corey are feeling the winds changing, and Shannon Studstill is leaving Sony and going to Google. Stadia is getting a bit more help. All that and a whole lot more in today's show, but first, here's the Inside Scoop. Sucker Punch has finally given us more details on Ghost of Tsushima. Now, of course, they've given us details for pre-orders. You can get your deluxe edition if you have $220. Get a mask and all kinds of other goodies. Game looks really super cool. I've been looking for this Tenchu kind of samurai feel. And Ghost of Tsushima might be just that title. But the biggest information is when it's coming out. And we finally get that date on June 26th. So the coronavirus is striking as we know it all around, but GDC may have been canceled, but Xbox doesn't care because they've announced that GameStack Live will be held from March 17th to the 18th on Mixer. Now this is kind of a summary of all that was supposed to be held at the actual event. So this is pretty exciting stuff. Anno 1800 has hit a million players this past December, and when they announced that, they also laid out what's going to be in Season 2's DLC. It starts off with Seed of Power on March 24th, followed by Bright Harvest, and you can guess what that's about, and lastly, Land of Lions in a Southern Continent. We did a review on 1800, and we're going to do a review on this DLC, so check that out in the near future. Well, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a huge Call of Duty fan. Well, guess what? The all-new Battle Royale offering is here, Warzone. Let's check it out. Drop into the all-new Battle Royale offering from Call of Duty series, Warzone. A 150-player showdown where the last ones standing take home the victory. Along with playing the classic Battle Royale mode, make sure to check out the all-new Plunder Game mode. And the best part is, Warzone is totally free to play, whether you own Modern Warfare or not. We got more PlayStation news. We're talking about The Last of Us. No, not The Last of Us Part 2. We all know that's coming on May 29th. I can't wait, neither can anybody else at ITG either. But did you know it's actually coming to an HBO TV series? A little surprised by that one, I gotta be honest. This will be the first time ever that PlayStation is bringing a game franchise to the television networks. Now, we'll see how this goes, but over on HBO, Casey Boyles had this to say. This is an incredibly exciting opportunity for us to partner with Craig, Neil, Carolyn, and the teams at Sony, Naughty Dog, and PlayStation to bring the virtual world of this acclaimed game to life. Neil Druckmann is without question the finest storyteller working in the video game medium and The Last of Us is his magnum of opus. While this seems like a cool idea, we'll have to wait and see. We've seen video games come from the video game genre and go into movies and not really kind of fare over so well. Whether or not it's going to work for television is a whole other story. But we have a lot more to wait for yet because we have no details as to when it's coming. So we'll just sit back and wait. All right, so St. Patrick's Day just got a little more greener and even a little more redder with the reveal of Spawn for Mortal Kombat 11. Finally, the last character for all the DLC for Mortal Kombat is here, and personally, my favorite character of all time probably in the Mortal Kombat series. On March 17th, we finally get our hands on him if you have the Fighters Pack. So let's check out the trailer right now. Together, we can 
purge the Ten Hells. Only if you follow my lead. All due respect, that's not in the cards. Fight! I don't know about you, but I personally really miss the skate games. It's been over a decade since anybody released a solid skate platforming game on console quite like we had it before. And Dane Hedgepeth from Easy Day Studios put a little blog together on PlayStation Blog detailing his game, Skater XL, and what they hope to do in the near future. Part of this announcement is that they're coming to PlayStation exclusively. And now this is a big deal because console just doesn't have a game in the same space, and this one wants to kind of follow the trail that Skate had put down long before it. More of a physics game, this one gives you the control of your left and right foot being the left and right stick. It's going to be a little bit creative to get all these tricks going properly for you, but they ensure that the control scheme is the focus of this game. They want to put you in the middle of this sandbox and just let you go. So officially, there is hope once again for GameStop. There has been three really big names hired on with the company, two of which are really well known in the business world, and one of which we all know and love, Reggie fils -Aimé. Now this is pretty surprising because he stepped down from Nintendo after being there through mostly the good, a little bit of bad with the Wii U, but mostly the good. And to see him go to GameStop, this comes as a bit of a surprise. But nonetheless, he wants to bring back that good old brick and mortar stores that we all grew up loving. Nate, your head's glowing, just like Ori. <laughs> Nate, I've been looking forward to this title for a very, oh, baby. very long time. I'm talking about Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Dude, this game, okay, like wow, what a throwback. This game is one of the most incredible games I've ever played so far this year in 2020. Probably already going to make one of the top 10, if not top three Ooh, for 2020 for me. This, this game is incredible. If you played Ori in the Blind Forest, think of that times two. Dude, they stepped this one right up. This is fantastic. This game is fantastic. I loved it. I unfortunately missed the boat, man, on uh, the first one. I remember yeah, seeing trailers, but I just sure. never got my hands on it. But now that I've seen the second one, oh my goodness, the, let's get with the graphics, okay? Because yeah. visually, this game is stunning. It is a game that is built on layers, and that is like, so you have the foreground is so dark and it kind of blocks and shadows everything in but then it layers and kind of builds this puzzle piece for you of everything laid out in front of you and it is one of the most incredible art styles i've ever seen witness like an art book from them from moon studios i like i'm in i'm all in for this one it is so cool i'd love to see the design document behind this game because the way it is it's one layer then another layer another layer and each layer just adds more depth to the game so it feels on a 2d plane that is really like 3d because it, it goes back so far, and then you got the creatures that are moving behind it, and then you got creatures that come up in front of it, right? Like, there's so much motion always on screen at once. And you felt that. I did, and unfortunately, it wasn't a good feel because no. I'm playing on the, not the original Xbox, but the Xbox One S. Yes. And whenever it got out to like a panned out kind of view, I got some serious frame rate issues. So, this is. You know, a review in progress, yep, and they have released that they're doing a day one patch. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it can at least, maybe not completely fix it, but right. optimize it. Because 
most of the game is really clean when it's when it's not super panned out and you're sure. just on like a smaller view it's like it's that 60 fps that i'm loving but it's then my so goodness but when you're trying to platform and kill things and then you're framing out it's yeah it really took away from the experience for me man which is too bad because this game i thought would run so beautifully well on the xbox so many on layers the, man there's too many well, layers they're, maybe that's the problem right <laughs> i'm on the x all right and i'm still feeling some of that wow. chug so we are told the polished version, the more polished version, is really on the con or the PC side of things. So expect the day one patch. And this is why we're doing a review in progress, is because the day one patch, we're gonna see if our skills and everything will get any better because of the patch, or if our, maybe our score will change at the end of this review as well. Yeah. All in all though, the story okay. of Ori and Ku is kind of your bird creature, your owl-like thing, right? Basically what happens is you guys go out on a little adventure and you're separated. And it's basically you finding Ku. So you want to go back and rekindle and meet your friend, your family and regenerate everybody and way you go, whatever, right? So it's it's, it's so it's beautiful, so man. Cool, I, man. The way they do it, like I watched the beginning of the first one with with my girlfriend, and sure. actually, so it actually kind of had a very similar beginning. It where sure it's did. Mostly cinematic. Yeah. But it's just it got me right in the feel goods, man. It it is beautiful. It's something really nice about it. The creatures they created, they're just That's awesome. super imaginative. So this time around, I feel that there's more creatures out there that you're actually communicating with and you're talking mm. to. There's a lot Talk. more dialogue. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so there's a guy who give you a map and there's talk to give you upgrades and skills and all these people you're meeting out within the game that is something that wasn't there in the first time around. Mm. So to bring more characters in and the way they tell the story with very little dialogue but at the same time it's the mood and the tone and then the atmosphere that's created and how it's all told through cinematics and then the audio is bar none one of the best dude just, i can sit back so i turn on the game <laughs> and i'm right there at the very beginning screen i'm waiting to hit the start button and i just sat there for five minutes listening to the opening screen oh man like it is it is so good i, I love the score I don't buy soundtracks. This is one. Wow, eh? Ah, uh, man, I'm right there with you, though, because with the beautiful setting that they've created, this music, every time, all the time, even when it gets a little dark and you have to maybe do that boss fight or whatever, yeah. the music, everything just, like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Now, here's one of the problems I had. Mm. So you pause the game, <laughs> all right? You and I were talking about this yeah. off screen. You pause the game, it says hit X. To resume. To resume. You oh. don't hit X, you hit A. Yeah, you can't even hit B. Nope. It is A. a. So there's one little minor thing. Sorry. The other thing Sorry. that kind of got me was you start off this game with no abilities whatsoever. So by the time you finish Ori in the Blind Forest, dude, you're you're, you're like, fully equipped. You're completely equipped. So I'm like, I'm starting from scratch all over again. And that kind of was like, I got nothing. Like I don't even have double jump. When you get started, so uh, I was kind of like I didn't have that disconnect because I didn't play the uh, first one, so, so that would be a little odd. Uh, Where I, did his abilities go? Well, that's okay. That's what I mean, right? So why do I just suddenly start from scratch? I finished the other one, had all these abilities, all these talents and things that I wanted. Kind of, I knew going forward, and then to jump in, and I had to, I had nothing. It was, I was completely stripped. No backstory as to why, and it was just nothing there. So I was kind of like, crap, man. Like I don't even have a simple double jump. And then as you progress through the game, obviously you get all these abilities. It doesn't take too long, but it's it still... does. It was still just a little weird disconnect. But <laughs> yeah. the game is set up so that you go back to other areas, like that Metrovania kind of thing, right? So that Metroidvania was you go back and forth, back and forth between the levels because there's certain parts that you can't, can't encounter because you don't have that ability yet. And I find that not frustrating because of the game's fault, but it's it's just me. I like to really thoroughly search everywhere. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I when can I come back to this? Yeah. Or, or like, I'll oh, forget about it. I don't remember. And then so, you pull hey, up the map and you see a gray part and you're like, oh, I got to get back over there. And sometimes the problem is you're way on the other side. And you need to go all, all the, way the way back, back. to the other side. And there's no fast travel. There is a fast travel. Oh, so nice. you get your little shrines, and as you save the game, that, that allows you to jump between how levels. How did I never stuff. notice that I could fast travel between shrines, time. man? <laughs> so you jump between these things, but at the same time, I'm like, man, I'm going back. And I, typically for me, all I want to do is move forward. So for these kind of games, it's just kind of one of those things. It's, it's a style of game, so I get it. And I appreciate it, but it's not really for me, but this game overall, I absolutely love. Yes, man.
So Nate, as we said, this is a review in progress because we're waiting on that day one patch. We are several hours in the game, not completed the game yes. yet. So at five hours in, I'm 30% through the game. Wow. So I still gotta get through the rest of the game because we got our reviews a little later than we normally do. So it is what it is, but I wanted to kind of get in on the game and see how this part right now, is how we kind of feel when we come back to it next week when we review the final version of our review. But we've had some issues. How you feel so far? Mostly good, but they really do need to fix the frame rate issues because yeah, I know. when you're platforming and jumping, it it ultimately takes away from the experience to the point where it, I can't sometimes complete things almost. Yeah. It's that hard where it's that yeah. jaggy. See? So I'm gonna have to give it a six and a half. Ooh. This game will be significantly better, wow. but it's it's honestly that bad. Man. Wow, that's because you're on the S, as you said, right? Yeah. So I'm on the X, I had a couple issues here or there, so if they can get that polished, but everything else is there. The audio, the visuals are absolutely stunning. The mm -hmm. gameplay mechanics, the abilities. Though I didn't get them at the beginning, still came along as I progressed, and it's right there, and I'm getting back to that feel of, man, there's so much to do and explore. Absolutely love what I'm into. So far, I'm in there with a nine. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful visuals and an outstanding score makes Ori and the Will of the Wisps one game to watch for. Hopefully Moon Studios can fix that optimization. Jumping in some of our favorite stuff, buddy. Stealth and VR. And we're it. Scott, you and I put on the Oculus headset because we checked out Covert. This is a stealth puzzle game. What'd you think of this one? This one's really cool. I like how this is a co-op kind of asymmetrical uh, VR. Well, co-op game. Uh, yeah. I've seen other ones kind of similar like this. Somebody's sure. on the mobile, somebody's on the headset, but it was a competitive one. So I like the idea that I can work with somebody now. That is honestly, is one of the best parts about the game, but also one of the worst parts about the game because if you don't have your co-op partner with you to help you out on the phone, you can't really play the game without yeah, it. Yeah, that is it. You're just left out of luck. So, okay, let's get into the game. Basically what's going on is you are a hired thief you and your partner to go out and do these heists and kind of break someone free a little higher up within the organization. And you're trying to work together and solve all these puzzles and sneak your way through. Dude, some of the environments in this game were awesome. Like starting oh, yeah. out in that museum and then there's just a jailbreak. There's like all kinds of crazy cool stuff and you're like missile launching and things. Dude, I had a blast. The, yeah, you have a ton of these different gadgets, so you can kind of zip line yourself around or highlight things for the uh, your hacker to control and, yep. and kind of set up for you. And you work your way through these rooms. And, and I really like how when you meet the secret society kind of thing, they allude to the fact that they've been around forever. And they kinda, yeah. there's like a lots of history, little threads weaved through there. I, I like this, how the game tells a story. Even in the kind of hub thing that you return to, yep. that little shop. I like the character there. She's cool. Yeah, she's really really cool and I like how that's it's just a quick loading kind of game it, it doesn't seem to be too kind of heavy on my system no not and, at all uh, and the, I didn't have too much problem with the mobile either so the mobile aspect of it I've kind of come to expect there'll be some kinks with that yeah but I only yeah. found one I found one kink all right, what do you got uh, well in one level I was trying to move a block through uh, into the next room too sure block off some lasers, but it just did not accept on the mobile that the door was open. Even though I could see it in virtual reality, I'm standing right there, I could walk through it. Really? Eh? But yeah, I had that one, and, and looking at this game, I've heard similar things, sort of. There's some kind of bugs that pop up, yeah. you just have to restart your level and it'll work itself out. I never experienced that issue. The biggest issue I had is you have to sync with your co-op partner the press of a button, so you have to ah. time yourself so you'll have these detonation things you gotta kind of sync up for one particular mission that we're working on. And you have to push a button, but so does your co-op partner at the same time. And as Crystal is hitting the button, I'm hitting the button. And then, okay, here's the other part that I found was kind of a little off for me. Mm -hmm. In order to hit the button, in most VR games, you just, it's the head of a button, so you reach out and you push the button, you right? You just push it with your hand, yeah. Here, we actually have to pull the triggers and then it activates and then goes 
sends your hand out and then pushes on the button. So between her hammering on the phone and then me pushing, like clicking my button, then the hand would come out, like the timing was just off. Yeah, just so it'd be a little bit. Clink, miss, clink, miss, clink, miss, ding! I was just like, really? Okay, that part, like, I want to be able to push the button. I'm in VR. The whole idea of being in VR is that you're way more immersed, typically, yeah. than you would in a normal game. So the ability just, it's just common sense that relays to yourself, oh, button, push it. Like, you don't and reach I out tried to do that many times. Yeah, yeah, that's, of course, we first try that. The VR has been around for a while, and these are the things we kind of expect with Kind of, yeah, that, I was used to that, right? Yeah, it was a disconnect to kind of just run a procedure. It was like an animation start. So yeah. Trigger, I don't really like that. Challenge, Every but. button is the same way. That It's all like an activation. It's almost like if you're holding a controller, and then you hit the X button or the A button, depending on whatever system you're on, mm -hmm. right? And then that would go out and kind of relay the information that you've hit the trigger. Now in VR, it enables us to go and just reach out your hand and push that button. So I was kind of anticipating that. So when I was, I stood there for five minutes going, like, why isn't it? How? And then because of you'd be up against it, it would push me back. And I was like, Yeah, I, I didn't get, have that. I don't get what's going on. Why? I'm just trying to reach the button. And then I clicked the. T I'm like, Oh, uh, man. Okay. Yeah, really? they, they might have done a little bit better at telling us how to interact with some of the items. Yeah, that was the biggest part. A lot of the time it ends up being right trigger, and it's just a yeah. kind of aim thing. But that's. It, I, I don't think it told us that very well. No, it didn't. But that honestly, that was the biggest takeaway from this game that was really effective that I didn't like. But the rest of the game, like from the character, the art style, the the heist we're pulling off, and the gadgets and everything else. I had a great time playing this oh, game. Yeah. I thought it was cool. And my biggest thing when it comes to playing VR is how do we move within the game? Mm -hmm. And the minute I saw we were actually walking, I went, oh, oh. Yeah, it's a little. But it was slow enough that I didn't get that motion sickness that I would normally get. Because a lot of games, you just, you're just you kind of like barreling through, and then they tunnel your vision. And here, because you're so almost like sluggish in a sense, but I appreciate that because you are being stealthy and you're sneaking, but sometimes I'm sneaking up behind guards and trying to creep around them and at the same yeah, time I'm going, to try and limit I'm really sound. slow, so maybe I'm going to get caught here, but maybe I won't. And then you're zip lining from one place to another. The luckily, zip line can be a little... they kind of shrink the thing it, there. Yeah, it can. But it can get you in the motion. If you're a little sensitive to that stuff, be a little wary of that. But besides that, actually moving throughout the game I thought was fantastic. I didn't get sick whatsoever, and I was in there. First time I put it on, man, I was there for hours. I had a great time. Scott, one of the coolest aspects of the game as well is the artwork. I'm always kind of drawn in this Pixar, Fortnite kind of feel. And that's kind of where they really took this game, I thought. Yeah, it didn't bother me, though. The fact that it's in VR but still cartoony, I'm yeah, okay cool. with that, in, especially in some... I've seen it work out really well, yep. and this was one of those. Absolutely. And this is some of the team, too, behind the God of War series. So they know video games, man. And when we jumped in, this I thought it was smooth, it was fluid. And everything just worked the way I wanted it to, except for the fact that I couldn't push my button. Yeah, just a little bit of a disconnect. That was it. Hey, we'll close the doors. We're not going to be stuck in long sequence. Ah, Francis. All in all, Scott, you and I had a great time. What are you scoring covert? Uh, well, I had a pretty good time, like you said, except that, uh, you know, it caused a couple little arguments here and there. That's what happens when you have to play a co-op game. But <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, it's not a too bad. I had a really good time with this, and I would like to see sequels. I want to see more of this kind sure. of game. I want to see people do this kind of peripheral thing on the side. I think that's great. So I'm going to give this one an 8.5. I'm really impressed with this one. Yeah, you know what? I'm right there with you. I thought this was awesome. Co-op experience worked really well for me. 8.5 as well. A stealth VR title is just what we wanted, and with great co-op. We just wish we could push that button ourselves. Oh no, get out of there. Scott, do you do you hear that sound? It's the winds of change. All right, Scott, cringeworthy intro aside, 
we got into Winds of Change, and it is definitely a change from what we're normally used to playing. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yeah. So this is a point-and-click kind of adventure story game. But it's very light on the point-and-clicking, <laughs> and very heavy on the story game. Yes, yeah, so very, very heavy. So getting into the kind of bits of this game, it's a fantasy, and it's a very well kind of thought out character drama between a bunch of different characters mm -hmm. in this fantasy world. Yeah. And the locations and stuff that you kind of go through are definitely kind of a standout to me. So I kind of want to hit on some of the things that I liked about this game. Yeah, that's fair. The art style is definitely a good place to start with this one, I think. Yeah, now the art style overall, kind of uh, very choosy. This is, uh, if for all those who don't know, this is this is a furry kind of fiction story. Oh yeah, fiction a lot of, story. yeah. Um, Animal, but, humanoid type characters. Yeah. Now, that might be kind of strange to some. I've seen a little bit of this media before, so I did try and keep an open mind and jump right into yeah. it and see where the story takes us. And the story, uh, well, it goes and it goes. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? It is that fantasy-based story. We, without giving away too much, you know, we kind of get thrown into a scenario where we are kind of waking up and we don't know who we are exactly, but the people around us know who, are, who, who we personally are. And then kind of at the beginning, we're trying to discover exactly who we are, what kind of role we're playing in all this kind of, you know, chaos that's going on around us. And it's it really lays in kind of this heavy tone early on when it comes to how the story's told. Mm -hmm. And it, like you said, it throws you into some of these backdrops early on. And you get an idea for how the characters are going to look throughout the game and how, you know, the, the environments or I guess I'm just going to call it the scenery because mm -hmm. when you change from scene to scene it's just a backdrop that changes there's no real moving parts or anything sometimes it fades into a, a different looking version of the same scene while things are going on depending on how the story is unfolding mm -hmm. but you know what for me i just got caught with how slow this game felt scott like i know there's an auto function that lets us you know go through the bubbles and i'm not clicking but man <laughs> i was dying throughout this one yeah now very useful function you can also when you get presented with a section where you are meant to search through and find some backstory mm -hmm. you can find all these books and backstory and they'll tell you more about the world and the conflict that's happening mm -hmm. but the majority of it's told through this left and right panel back and forth mm -hmm. conversation you luckily you can skip through that you hit these search sections you skip through that so I find that this game was more played I say played it kind of played itself yeah. while I listened and and from an audiobook kind of standpoint I kind of see where some things are going I kind of like some of the characters but it's just behind this wall of a specific type of media that yeah. I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to break through. No, and I think this game is going to be very, you know, love or hate. You're either going to totally get immersed into this story and just love it all the way through, or you're going to struggle kind of, you know, getting a hold of the characters and just really feeling that story. If it's not your type, you're going to know within the first hour of playing this game. But at the same time, it might catch you on the way through. But for me, it was just the pacing of it that really, really slowed everything down. And the fact that going into this, I wasn't sure how interactive it was going to be. There are some dialogue choices. They say that, um, you know, will change some outcomes near the end of the game as you go through so you should be aware of the choices you are making but again there aren't many of them no and they are varied it is nice there isn't you know it's not just one or two options you know we've got four or five options That's true, yeah. so it was kind of nice to have that variety there as well but at the same time i'm just i feel like all i was doing was opening and closing dialogue bubbles and if you're not into the story it's it, to me, it almost didn't feel worth it to keep going. Yeah, this game's got a lot of those kind of problems where it's maybe not just, like that's the gameplay, is mm -hmm. by deciding how you're gonna react to certain characters yeah. and kind of change the party composition up a little bit. It also gives you the option to backtrack where you can talk to the party members or they'll have their own kind of banter that goes along with yeah. it. So it looks like they thought about a lot of things in this game. How are they gonna tell the story? Who are these characters and how are they gonna interact? For sure. And there's a lot to be said about that. Some people are really going to enjoy that aspect of it. Oh, definitely. It's a well put together game. So it's not that it's not that this is a badly made game. It's just not maybe a game that's particularly my style. It's definitely made for somebody. And I think the art style is going to hook somebody and the way the story is being told. We never even get to the voice acting in this game, which is a huge part because there aren't many interactive aspects. Being able to actually hear the characters' voices. And besides, you know, the odd character that had, you know, that kind of ugh, somewhere a little silly. Uh, yeah. yeah, that voice for you, maybe not, not hitting so well. The, the, mo the main character voice acting I thought was excellent and overall that's really what kind of gets you into the story at first and it's just a matter of if the content's going to hold you for the rest of the way. What a pitiful little village. It's no fun when they don't put up a fight. Did you know what they did in their final moments? 
All right, Scott, we've talked quite a bit about Winds of Change, a game that does a lot of talking. So if you've got to score this one, what are you going to give it? Well, I'm going to leave the talking mostly to the game. Yeah. Um, it was played less of a game, and it was more of a story. I do appreciate that they told the story very well. This mm -hmm. is uh, a low number, but it's a good piece of media, I think. I have to give this, as a game, though, a 3.5. Unfortunately, it just did not capture me again and again. You know what? I can kind of agree with you there, because to me, this didn't really feel like a game, more like a visual audiobook or a visual novel. Mm -hmm. um, the voice acting was really good. I did like the art style for the most part. Not necessarily my style, but it didn't look horrible by any stretch. Yeah. But you know what? Overall, I think the game's made well enough that the people that are going to like it are going to enjoy it. But for me, it just wasn't there. I got to give this one a 5 out of 10. Voiceovers and the overall art style were done really well, but the long dialogues between actions make this one hard to stick with. All right, Scott, it's me and you hopefully finding each other in this very barren, open survival wasteland. All right, Nate, this time we're checking out Daisy's DLC, Livonia. Now, this one, just like Daisy, is, well, what did you think of this game? All right, man, well, it was tough, man. This game has a massive learning curve to it because unlike most survival games that I've played, which are typically pretty difficult. And it, your thing, yeah. Yeah, and it's my thing. I love survival games, but this game, it's just, you spend so much time trying to find resources and become very unsuccessful most of the time. <laughs> or when you do find some, you might just find the clip of a gun, but then never find the gun. You might just find that clip. Yeah, so this is, uh, <laughs> you're hitting the nail on the head there, because it is a survival uh, exploration game, but the exploration is punishing every time. <laughs> every time. When you start a character in this game, you get a little bit of some creative character pieces, you spawn, you drop into this world, and it is just apocalyptic. Think of 28 Days Later, but... <laughs> There's not even zombies around. Like, there's a few, but they're not <laughs> that's, really around. And that's just the thing. It is so barren. There's hardly any animals. There are some that you can collect for meat, but those are just the occasional chickens that I <laughs> came across. <laughs> but it's just super barren. Everything is... I, I get it, because it's kind of the feel. It is very... It's a zombie apocalypse. Everything's run down and dead. But it just felt a little too empty for me. Yeah, and some of that is uh, the persistent server versus not persistence. In a persistent server, you have stand the chance of somebody going through that area before you and kind of already swiping up all the goods. But even if you drop into like a brand new server <laughs> in this game, it will punish you. You Still. <laughs> just die a couple times before you get anything that kind of builds up a character. And, and it's, it's very hard to even just stay alive, get the food that you need. When you spawn in the main game, you get one piece of food and a rag. No matter what. You get maybe some other items, but you get that no matter what. And that's designed to just kind of get you to the next town or whatever. In Livonia, you just... I think every time I spawn, I spawn in the rainstorm in the middle of the dead <laughs> night. Totally can't see anything, anything around and I have to stumble my way to a building where I don't find any food. <laughs> I find two bullets but no gun and then I, I some clothing that I just will never need. So unfortunately there's there's that aspect of this game where it just keeps keeps punching you every time you try to sit down and get into it. <laughs> oh man. So to complement this kind of, you know, lack of ingredients and stuff to find, the inventory system is a little lackluster, but rightfully so. It's a survival game. You're meant to, you know, if you want to drink the bottle, you have to put it physically in your hands and then sit there and drink it for 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah, some <laughs> weird minutia of how to survive is in there. I got some dried rice and then I just ate the dried rice, but the problem was that I never added water to it. So it helped me for a second and then drastically <laughs> took away all my health and food and water intake. So yeah. There's no. a learning curve to it. A lot of the things you'll pick up a piece, an item, and you'd be like, okay, what do I use this for? So there, it's just, 
a massive a learning curve. Piece to it, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's a whole crafting system which mostly comes in later for the you know the hardcore crafting. Yeah, the, the few who stick around and can actually get <laughs> enough duct tape to string together things <laughs> yeah. might build a car even useful. somehow. <laughs> yeah, it can be done in this game. I know I've seen the videos, but yeah. it's just it's leagues ahead of anything that the survivor starter is going to get to. Unfortunately, the inventory is really rough. I had a hard time just <laughs> moving stuff into my hand and then versus my pants pocket, and then oh, uh, moving man. that. Or if you need to drop something and equip it, like that gets really messy. So it, it's things that make sense where you can't put your boots on without taking them out of your backpack. Everybody knows that, <laughs> yeah. but when it comes to a game, I just want to hit Y <laughs> yeah. and equip my item, you know? It's, that disconnect was, again, punishing, but and, it fits in with the game. Yeah, and with the game at the very start, they kind of ask you, do you want to do the tutorial? And they tell you, it is a very basic tutorial. They oh, give okay. you about three or four tips, and then they slap you in the game. So. I was lucky enough. To, like everything, you just have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> I was lucky enough to have somebody who was experienced uh, at the game sit down with me and kind of guide me through the first many lives that I <laughs> went through to, to get a kind of grip on it. But I had a hard time jumping in with a friend, and that's something that I think this game could definitely benefit from a lot. Mm. If you jump into a friend's game, you just drop somewhere in the map, and and the map is actually giant. Even the DLC, it's just way too big that you would never want to walk from one side to the other. Oh, it's insane, and you have to find a compass or a map or a street name that has a lot of characters that, for generally, most of us, generally don't understand, so yeah. it's just... It's tough, man. Like they that's what this game needs in my opinion. I've played Ark, that's my main staple of a survival game, and I prefer having a zone spawn. Let me spawn in the north, let me spawn in the southeast, whatever it is. Just so I can maybe play with my friends, because this would be pretty fun to try to survive with my friends, but to spend maybe up to two hours to try to find you, but to die doing so. It's yeah, just to get to it's hours, not worth it in my opinion. Yeah, no, what they need is a more flushed out multiplayer system. I like this game as a survival game, but when it comes to you know jumping in with friends and stuff, I want more of a competitive edge. And I think that's kind of a lot of the feedback that they received. This company also went on to create Vigor. Nah. And that makes a lot of sense now. So if you think <laughs> about Vigor and how it looks, it looks kind of like PUBG but a little empty. And that's generally how Daisy looks <laughs> and and it really I think they kind of took a lot of the aspects that would be really good in Daisy and just kind of made their own game out of it. Mm. So I don't know if we'll ever get the kind of updates and hopefully maybe one day it is maybe. an older game now so yeah it's uh, fading away but <laughs> it's so complicated and there is still a hardcore community you never really know what's going to come out. Yeah. Well, Scott, if this game couldn't get any more punishing, dude, it did because there's no, you know, there's no beds that you can build to respawn back in. When you die, it's permadeath. You get one life per round, that's it. All your stuff, gone. Unless, you know, like we were saying earlier, you, you know, we find a shovel, we dig somewhere that we know is on the map, and then we find it in our next playthrough. <laughs> like that sounds like finding a needle in, in a haystack. A big haystack. It's <laughs> yeah. Another aspect of this game that's just, just gonna beat you over the head. <laughs> So Nate, you've jumped into DayZ, you've been beaten up a little bit. What uh, what do you want to score this game? Well, after this much suffering and pain, man, this game was tough. I, I love survival games, but it was just a little too barren and empty for me. I'm going to have to give this a 6. There's definitely a game that people like here, and it has a pretty big following, so I respect it, but for me, 6, man. Yeah, I <laughs> jumped in and I tried to get through it, but really, I admire this game for how it looks and how it, you know, the premise of it more yeah. than the actual execution of it, unfortunately. Yeah, it's... I have to give that a 6 as well. We took a dive right into Livonia. Due to difficulty, we did not survive. Google Stadia is in the headlines again with some industry figureheads. Not really sure what's going on here, but Drew and I discussed this in today's episode. Let's 
Scott, we got some exciting news heading to Stadia because Shannon Studstill has left Sony Santa Monica and is actually heading over to Google Stadia. Yeah, they're starting a new uh, open location at Playa Vista. Yeah. And this is one, I believe this is the second one that they are opening that it is, is. in-house Stadia exclusive developers. Which is a big get because Shannon's worked on some one of the best titles. Got a war ring a bell? Yeah, that's a big one. Right? Like game of the year last year, 2018. That one was a huge staple and she was a part of that. She's a part of Journey. She's got such a lo long list of games she's been involved in, so I can see why they snatched her up. Yeah, this kind of goes along with the Jade Raymond and some of the other industry people that they're pulling from here yes. and there and just kind of assembling their own team. Uh, it also follows on the heels of some weirdly unfortunate news about the games coming to Stadia and how they're maybe not as supportive, but yeah. this is kind of a different uh, angle at solving that problem. If they can make their own games from within house, then what do they need everybody else for? Well, problem solving in a, an extensive part of getting that first party, right? Yeah. That's the biggest thing where we've talked about this on the show before, is that Stadia doesn't have that first party lineup. And when they move forward now that they're building up those developers, bringing them in, I kind of feel they're almost a little too little too late scenario. Yeah. But they still, so obviously they have a vision going down the line, but when you launch the system, this is where you make or break the system right now, right? So when you remember when Xbox first launched, they kind of had a bit of a rocky get-go, but then slowly over time. But now we're on to the next like Xbox Series X. So is that like how long are we have to wait for Stadia to kind of play that catch-up when they've already launched basically their best game right now on there is Guilt. Yeah, and well, are they going to be able to compete with some of the things that are coming out in the next console edition? Like, are they really going to be able to tread water with some of these other big people in their yeah. own in-house studios? It's going to be interesting to see. And I really did enjoy Guilt. I like that Loved they, it. you know, they have their own in-house thing. I think they should have done that from the start. Yeah. Um, it kind of follows that trend of exclusivity or early access, I should say. So yeah, I think too many things are coming out a year, kind of pre-baked. Well, that's just it. They're, that's what I mean when I say they're too little too late because mm -hmm. they just they launched it back in November and they came up short. They had all third party titles. They bring in Tequila Works to kind of give them that one exclusive, but it's still not enough. Tequila Works isn't owned by Google Stadia. That's true. So yeah. they're out on their own. They're able to kind of produce for whoever they feel like at the time, if they, if they whatever kind of deal they kind of wander up sort of thing. But at the same time, you need Shannon then to come in and go, okay, you know what, guys, this is what we need to do. But I feel like they should have taken her two years ago, not yeah. now. We're great, you know, and I'm happy for Shannon that she's gone over there, and I'm excited to see what she brings to the table and what Jade Raymond is going to bring to the table going forward with Stadia because I'm a Stadia supporter. I'm a Stadia believer mm -hmm. in the future of streaming tech and all that stuff. We also have Xbox with Project X Cloud, right? Yeah. That's another staple right now. And the problem with that for Stadia is that Xbox has a huge library already on their beta setup for xCloud. More games than what Stadia has. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And well, another thing to kind of consider, if this game does come out or if games produced by this developer, are they going to just hit Google's kind of freebies section? Hmm. Are they gonna be on the monthly quickly or how are they gonna kind yeah. of leverage those? It makes me think that they're sitting on something that they haven't quite told us about yet. But I'm sure they're holding something back, right? They've said they have 120 titles in development. That sounds like a lot. It is a lot, but okay, well, where are they? So when you reach out to them, you know, well, they're really responsive on Twitter, but at the same time they go, well, we don't, we're not ready to announce what yet, right? So you kind of get this, crap, well, what do you guys have for us to pay our Stadia Pro subscription every month, right? Why am I paying for this Pro Premium service when there's nothing really there that's new compared to going to Xbox or PlayStation. Yeah, you'd have a real hard time sitting on your hands if you did have a big announcement to bring up like that. That yeah. would kind of get you into where it needs to be. And with the future being uncertain, we don't know if Stadia is gonna kind of yeah, I don't stay know. around. I don't know. So obviously, I think Shannon got some pretty good info as to why she would want to go there, coming from off of God of War, mm -hmm. right? So, you know what? Again, She's, looks good, but... It looks great on paper, but I can't wait to see what Shannon does in the end. I want to see what she's going to bring to the table. And hopefully, we get something sooner than later. All right, Drew, we're back as division agents heading all the way back to New York. Awesome.
Analysis complete. Aaron Keener. Status rogue. Nate, you and I jump back into the world of Division 2, Warlords of New York DLC. Now, I teetered off way long ago in the Division 2, got so far, and I thought I kind of hit, I felt like I hit a wall, and I was just like, I don't feel like grinding, man, and the way the enemies at the time felt, they were like bullet sponges. Happy to say, coming back into the DLC, we're now bumped automatically to level 30, so that may play a little factor into this, but I don't feel like the enemies were how they were in the previous version of the game. Now with the DLC out, I actually felt like when I shot somebody, they're actually getting damage and then passing, right? Like they're dying oh, off man. and I was able to kind of continue on. I feel the DLC moving forward for the Division 2 was a great addition and actually pulled me right back in. Oh man, so with the addition of four new enemies and a whole new map where we finally get to kind of re revisit the southern side of Manhattan. Yeah, so that's cool. We kind of get a couple of those touches from the first game, but still have some new, so yep. that's awesome. But in addition to that, they've actually revamped all the armor and weapon, kind of just fixed it. Like, because yeah. like you said, when we played it, I, I was, you know, impressed with Division 2. I played sure. a lot of Division 1, grinded it out too much. Yeah. Thought I might get back to it with Division 2 at launch didn't really hook me, but my goodness, with the Warlords DLC, they have hit this game out of the park. It yeah. is refined and just perfect, man. fine-tuned is what I really kind of think it's gone for now. And to get back in and build my agent to where I feel like I want to pursue and specialize my character into is really, really good. And then the bad guys are still there. Like, if I go out solo, I feel like it's still the division to me, mm -hmm. right? So if you're not really into the division, this might pull you in, but at the same time, it might not, because if you're going solo, it's crushing you still. It, it is. So like most games, they don't, or sorry, unlike most games, this game offers this sort of uh, call for help system. It does, so anytime yeah. you're in an activity, you can simply push a button or you launch a flare or whatever, and yep. then it distresses a thing in your server or whatever. So people can just quickly hop in with you. I've hopped in with people, helped them finish their missions. I met a couple really cool people that hopped in with me and helped me out. And even expanding upon this, they actually have a whole Discord kind of thing where there are over thousands of people there yeah. on there just willing to help out newcomers, new people. Which is cool. It is really cool. They have a really thriving community to kind of go along with this. Because I think if you jump in fresh, you are really lost. Because I don't feel with going with the DLC that it introduces you enough to the story, to the mechanics of the game, and how to really kind of delve in and dive deep within the game that you can with The Division 2. Yeah, the ability to skip to level 30 is great for, you know, your friends who already are at that point are like, hey sure. man, pick up the game. And then, yeah. so to be able to do that, they did do a good job, but it is overwhelming. Very. But now, you know, honestly, like most of these looter shooters, you do need to do some research. You can't just kind yeah. of ex be expected to understand how the armor and all the weapon works. But like I said, they've refined it, and it's a lot less complicated than when the game launched. It, oh, yeah, it definitely is a lot more simple, but not, you know, but still has lots of depth. Nate, our time with the Warlords was a good time, oh, actually. Man. I was quite impressed. What are you scoring this? And so I'm completely hooked, like I said, although there's no raid right away. It's yeah. coming shortly for Future free. Yep. And this game, just all the rework that they've done to make this really excellent, clean looter shooter, it's getting a nine for me, man. This DLC is great. I'm a little bit lower just because I felt like coming back into it, I needed a little bit more guidance for me. Somebody who's not more kind of in that genre. So yeah, I needed a little bit more help. Turn to you, got that help, so I appreciate that. But at the same time, I want a little bit more from Ubisoft coming out of them to help newer players get involved in the game. I'm there with an 8.5. Warlords of New York fixes many issues and problems that the Division has had over the years and is merely a perfect looter shooter experience. Lots of lore, cutscenes to flush out the story, a revised armor system, and tons of activities. Revisiting Manhattan has never been better.
All right, so on this week's Let's Play, me and the guys get to play cops and robbers in hot brass. We handle the most dangerous missions. Arresting bad guys and saving lives is always our goal. Just watch you don't peek there, Corey, when you get too close to the mic. There's a guy there. There's a guy there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Bust it in. Crap. Got one. Uh -huh. oh, oh, that's just you. Man, I, th oh. I thought they were coming after me. Oh no, I'm hurt. Oh, this guy's bleeding out. I didn't even notice the bullet hit me. <laughs> Whoa, I got another one down here. Too much action. Nice. <clears throat> Warning shots. Put him up. Last bang out. Don't. Show me your hand. Nice. Got him. Stop. Police. On your knees. Resting down. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure he's not going anywhere. <laughs> True enough. Uh, hey, dude, Scott. Scott, you still uh -huh. alive there, buddy? Yeah, just clearing the whole left side. Slowly. <laughs> like I might be shooting, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think we're shooting. They usually go shooting. Oh, you got some holes. Oh, there you go. Nice. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. That, I didn't even see that guy there. Yeah, he's back here. <laughs> we got him. What? Oh man, oh, man. No. there's like all the blood block trails around. <laughs> Scott's been rocking her head. I'm hurting too. I'm bleeding a little bit. Hey. Oh, nice, we did it. Alright, so we gotta get downstairs and get that health back. Come on, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh man, look at the trail you're leaving. On your knees. No, no, nothing in there. Oh, okay. Oh, this guy's fighting me? Oh. I got this guy. I got another one over here, too. Give me a second, guys. Oh, this guy's beat me. Yeah, this guy beat me. Are you good, Corey? I'm I'm alive, but just barely. I'm like Scott now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Scott died. I was too busy getting this guy, and then that guy came around. I had him, though. He was okay. Oh man, is there anybody else up here? Oh, Corey. <laughs> oh, there's two. There's two of them here. <laughs> just, yeah, I love how you guys. <laughs> oh man! I, uh, that guy got in the way. That guy got in the way. I love how you guys clamber over each other. That guy. I got him. I got him. I got him. Man. Like, clamber, clamber over each other, trying to like, get out of there. It's great. There we go. <laughs> okay. Alright. Alright, let's go through the door. No, it wouldn't let me. Because it like opened the opposite way. Police, on your knees. Hands in the air. Oh. Oh. Let me see your hands. Watch where you are. Watch. Oh, man. We They're in the way. <laughs> no. I was stuck. Oh, man. Let's go up to the next. Oh, there's already, if you can arrest him, arrest him. Oh, nice. We're still good, Corey. I know, man. Oh, yeah, you guys, are, you guys are great. It's great. <laughs> good job. Good job, guys. <laughs> you there for support, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, yeah, I got somebody over here. The smiling no. ghost. Oh, two. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, throw that flashbang. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. oh yeah, there's health, there's health right here on me, Drew. Oh, thank God. Okay, I'm coming. I'm, I'm still coming. <laughs> Whoa. There's somebody over, over there? Yeah, he's yeah, on our side. The here. person we got out yeah, the person oh, okay, we got okay. rescue. Nice. One more floor to go, man. Let's go. I only got a handgun, so... Oh, you're out of ammo? I'm out of ammo. Walking in here. 
Oh, you're gonna flash. Okay, I'm looking the other way. Uh, nope, don't have any flashes left. Uh, okay, this guy's gonna be coming around the corner. He's got a, a shoddy, I think. Oh, yeah. There's two. Pitch it through two oh, windows. No. Nope. Nope. He's, oh, he's shooting through the window. Oh, there's more than one window. They're all windows. Oh, there they go. There they go. I can't break through that window. Oh. Uh, he's lost. This. Oh, he got his fight back. Oh, my God. He's back. Sorry, no, no. Nice. Oh, that was close. <laughs> guys on the like an action hero. But watch out for the room on the right. Nice. Last time, last time, guy came in on the right and wasted me. Ah, <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. <laughs> that was that was dumb. intense. Oh, it doesn't show anything there. That's not good. Okay, oh, there's uh, three guys in here. If you got a flashbang, that'd be great. Yeah, I got one. If you okay, I'm gonna, the door. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open the door in three, two, one, go. There you go. Nice. Oh, I'm just hopping over stuff here. Apparently. <laughs> cool. There you go. Nice. We just gotta do the upstairs. Uh, oh, there's a room right here, actually. Let me check. Looking under the door. Yep. Put him up. Stop. 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 Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. watch this guy, watch this guy. Alright, we're good. <laughs> dodged oh, a bullet, wow. like literally dodged a bullet. Wow, that was close. Alright, there we go. Get down. Just free. Free. Watch. Free. Hands in the air. Show me your hands. Okay, there's one. Evidence secured. All right. Oh, that's it. Well, Nate, reviews, VR, all kinds of news. Another great episode, buddy. Now, each and every week, you guys hit us up at InsideTheGame.ca. We're there. You submit your clip so we can feature you on our show. Who we got this week? This week, we got Green Wolf Guts with a little bit of a funny play in Halo Master Chief Collection. <laughs> nice. Checking out a classic. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next week inside the game.